G'day trendsetters, today I'm coming to you from the Vanilla Workshop slash Speedwagon headquarters here in Portland, Oregon. Let's walk inside. And here we are, a hive of activity and more. That's nice, Billy, thank you. Hey, Jason, welcome to the shop. Thanks, Mike. How have your travels been? Oh, no worries. Good. I've been looking forward to visiting Vanilla slash Speedwagon headquarters because your brand is pretty legendary. Hello, folks. So tell us about what I'm seeing in here. Uh, it is legendary, that's, that's for sure. Uh, right now, we got a little bit of everything going on in the shop. Um, basically what you're looking at is an older version of our disc road bike uh, sitting here. Okay. And we basically built it up. I think this was uh, one of the surprise me um, 2017 paint jobs. Was that the Hala? Hala. Yeah. Um, so it's been in around the shop. We've kind of been using it as a demo bike for some folks um, to test it or ride it if they're in town. It's well used. That's it is well used. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we like to see that. <laughs> and sort of hanging above it is one of the team single speed cross race bikes that we did um, three years ago. And a bunch of the folks out of the shop really liked racing with the flat bars. Last year, we went to a mixture of flat bars and drop bars, uh, which was super fun, but just kind of based on the terrain and what was going on here uh, in the local race scene, which is really exciting. Um, and funny enough, we actually have two other single speed cross bikes hanging as well. Um, this was a remake of kind of the original um, team bike that was built, I think it was 2007. And so this was kind of one of the, the first, I don't know, kind of bikes that sort of really were catching some eyes of folks and sort of the blend of Speedwagon coming from vanilla. Uh, and then right below it, we have one of the first uh, urban racers that we did and so we did it for a local guy and he's kind of been um, in and out of the shop and it's just been sort of hanging out um, I think possibly for say yeah on consignment right now um, he has a few bikes from us and this is one that he just doesn't quite ride too often and then this is probably one of the most recent bikes that we did um, and it just came it went and came back from the unbound gravel event um, Shimano had come out with their new oh, yeah. all silver GRX group set yes. and so they had reached out and asked us if we'd want to oh, yes. put something together for them. This has the limited and when I say limited you can't even buy it. Exactly, <laughs> very very limited. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Luckily you can buy the bike and the paint job, yes. you just can't buy the group. <laughs> there you go folks, you see it here in camera, it does exist. It does. Not just renders, very cool. Yeah. But this is sort of where things tend to come before they would get photographed or shipped. Um, and this bike basically will be ready to go out um, here pretty soon. Uh, so we sort of just have a little bit on display, but also kind of getting ready to, uh, to pack up and, and get shipped out. Very nice. Yeah. And then um, I'd say next door is kind of where the magic happens, I guess. If you want to take a walk over there. We have a little bit, this is kind of a, um, Sort of a walk through history, I guess, a little bit here. This is one of the um, old Surprise Me bikes that we did with our sort of proprietary um, shipping box. And so basically the way it was designed was to be able to sh ship it like this. And as you put it together, you basically have an at-home bike stand. Um, That's very clever. Yeah. And definitely an option. Um, this is one of the first bikes that Sasha uh, ever made, and it was for his daughter and just a really wacky concept of a trike. And it did win uh, NABs when he brought it, and I don't remember which one, if it was the one here in Portland, which would have been 2010? Eight, nine, or 10? A while ago. A while ago, yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we kind of have a bunch of different bikes going on here. This was actually one of the first, um, I'd sort of say it was, a, it was a custom built bike, but this is kind of what the Urban Racer sort of was built off of. Um, and so it is built around 650B wheels and a single speed. Um, and so we kind of changed it to 650B with a coaster brake. Um, and then the bike sitting in front of it 
is one of our employee bikes that we made uh, this past year, which we were calling the uh, AAF, which is trying to build as much American-made parts that we could. So we did Paul Components, White Industries, um, and then <coughs> built in-house bar stem fork. Um, what else? We kind of went through it, and then we did a Cerakote uh, paint job to that, which is something new that we were trying um, and sort of figuring out and working with. So we kind of thought it would be neat to do on a commuter bike, and we had some um, 3M reflective paint basically in here. So if you kind of see it, you'll see the light that it's a little ghost of yeah. speed volume. You need to see this one in person, really. Yeah, this is one of my favorite bikes. I like. I'm very happy with that bike right now. Uh, and then this is a, another um, gravel bike getting ready to leave. We got a customer that's going to come pick it up. And so it's a um, 700 by 43C tire bike uh, in Army Green, which is kind of one of our staples. Um, and we did the two by with the Axis uh, SRAM Rival Group and uh, head wheels. Now we can get some tires in 43. Beautiful. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. This is a bike ready to go out. That's right. We're blessed with the sunshine today. Heats up our little corner. This is sort of a peek into the shop. Yep. So as you walk in, we sort of have a bunch of different things going on. This space, over the years, this was the original space. And so uh, within the last five years, we were basically able to take over that shop. And so at some point, everything was in here. And so as we've been able to get a little bit more room, we've sort of just started to expand, as you'll see. Um, so sort of the area where you're sitting right now, standing right now, um, I do a lot in here. So a lot of the brazing, a lot of the welding, um, basically like going through the finish work of um, cleaning out brazing, doing wheel checks, doing the alignment, things like that, uh, are all done sort of starting here. And um, over in this area, we basically start, we have um, customer orders, frame drawings, things waiting here, ready to go, um, depending if somebody's gonna do sort of one of the ready-made lines, or if they're doing full custom, um, we'll go through a packet with them and have all our info, uh, you know, go through it, frame drawings, um, paint cards, things like that. And so uh, right now, um, Josh over here behind me is working on uh, starting some disc road bikes. And so basically, um, we have a line of bikes going on right now. If you can kind of see hanging uh, in different variations of uh, finish. So a um, couple bikes here I just finished welding on Friday and now I'm starting to do um, bridges for them and then I'm going to start to braze, do the small parts, water bottles, cable guides, things like that. Um, and sort of as they go down the line they'll get QC'd and basically final check before paint. Uh, and so we do do everything in-house so we have the ability of um, having full control over anything that we need to or we want to, um, which is really nice. Yeah, yeah. And so it's a, you know a fairly small space, but we get a lot done with it. Um, I feel fairly efficient, which is nice. Uh, at the moment, we've been definitely battling the parts shortage. We've been able to keep building, keep going, which is very, which is pretty nice. Uh, we started offering some frame sets, which we had not done in the past, and that helped us get frames out the door, but it also put more stress on paint um, because they just basically kept going and kept going and kept going. And so um, we'll go through paint next, and you'll see they just kind of got a whole lot of different things going on. Um, but as you can see, we have a whole bunch of tubing back here behind the bridge port, which is my main lathe uh, or milling machine that I use. Um, and a whole bunch of old um, concept things that we, we've tried, we used in the past. Um, this is an old inch and eighth head tube that we had uh, laser etched. So the Speedwagon, you can maybe not see it, uh, but it's actually cut out. So we were doing a carbon tube 
on the inside and basically able to have that pop. But yeah, we can basically go right back into paint if you want to follow me. Um, these bikes are all QC'd, ready to go for paint um, in various stages. So we'll go in here, see what's going on today. A bunch of different stuff. So Patrick over here is finishing up. Uh, and this is actually one of the cross bikes as well. So um, it's going to be the same one that was hanging in the other room. Um, white, got sparkles to it. Uh, kind of our racy uh, scheme. Old, old kind of homage to this um, Skyway bikes, which is fun. And then we got Glenn and Woody here. Uh, Glenn's working on a, this is a titanium bike, carbon seat tube, so he's prepping it, basically getting ready to um, clean it up. It's gonna be brushed and then it's gonna have decals put on and uh, sandblasted before it goes to paint. No, different schemes. Oh, okay. This is an 18. Oh, gotcha, okay. So more, more paint than uh, the last few that we did, which are hanging behind me, actually. Um, so these are basically fresh out of the oven. Um, so for the raw tie, we kept the tie raw and then we painted the carbon, any of the carbon bits. So the seat post head, the fork, and the seat tube. And so this is kind of um, the seat post toppers and then the stems next to them. So yeah, kind of a little bit of a candy shell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then again, yeah, just bikes, you know, ready to go. They're going to get some finish work to them um, before they head upstairs, which I'll show you next. So up here we have basically a full workshop where all the bikes get fully built, assembled. Um, we might have a couple dogs that bark. So we got a, basically a bunch of customer um, kits ready to go. And so these are bikes that are in process in different places, whether it's ready in paint or going into build right now. Basically we organize it and make sure we have everything we need and where we need it. This is another one of the, um, the gravel bikes. Um, <clears throat> basically waiting for a couple small parts, I think a crank for this, and it will be ready to go. Um, similar to the other bike that we saw next door. <laughs> You're okay. You're okay. okay. And then we have a couple of um, different bikes in different processes right now. So these two are um, Thai carbon bikes, gravel bikes, similar to the paint jobs that you just saw in the paint shop, um, but basically almost fully built and pretty soon ready to roll. Beautiful. Yeah, Dustin does all of our builds. Um, almost every wheel is hand built here. Um, a few that we don't have. So we got some of the new Chris King wheels in for this bike. Um, we got a couple of doggos that run around. And That's okay. Uh, yell all day. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but yeah, basically Dustin does all the builds. Make sure everything's ready to rip looking good before they get some photos and head out into the world to be ridden. That's right. Here we are at the front of the Vanilla Workshop, staging a photograph here, the cover photograph of this beautiful machine. Gonna do the stand and drop technique. I don't recommend it myself, but this is what happens in the media. There's the photographer, way over there. So there you have it folks, a tour of the Vanilla Workshop slash Speedwagon headquarters here in Portland, Oregon. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cycles YouTube channel for interesting content such as this. No bull gravel bike reviews, other product reviews, ride right experience videos, and other madness. As all of it is released to the channel, I'll see you.
that gentleman, he's busy. We'll see him in the next video.